So in previous videos, we've looked at how to solve uh, first order differential equations using Euler's approximation method. Um, and we're going to solve a second order differential equation like this. Why is it second order? Because I've got a d2y by dx squared. Um, if I'm going to solve this, I'm going to need some extra initial conditions where I've got a point here, but I've also got a gradient. Um, Euler wrote his sort of equations, if you look in Ed Excel, they'll write them a bit like that. D2y by dx squared equals differences between different values, and they do uh, simultaneous equations to solve them. But if you think about it, what we're actually doing here is um, we're using a Taylor series, and um, we're going to use the first three terms. And I find it easier to think of it that way. Okay, so what's the difference from a first order? Well, in the first order, we did a linear fit using a that um, iterative method there. Um, so what did we do? Well, we had our initial point. We had the gradient at that point. We projected forward some small distance, say 0 0.1 or something like that, to get our second point. Now, with the second order differential equation, we've got the opportunity to fill in d2y by dx squared, which means we can have a quadratic fit and the first three terms of a Taylor series. So what does that mean? Well, it means I know the initial point. I know the gradient at the initial point, And I also know the curvature at the initial point. So that means I can fit a quadratic to it. So let's do the calculation to real um, and follow the process, the iterative process. OK, so we're going to use. Um, so before we do that, um, we're just going to have a look at the different ways of writing it. Apologies. So if you were working in Edexcel, they'll take that equation that I've just written. They'll take the tangent, um, effectively the linearization, substitute that into there to get rid of the dy by dx, and they'll give you an equation that looks like that. So you've got some sort of y to the r plus 1. It's made up of y to the r, y to the r minus 1, and the gradient. There's so the second derivative are there. Not very nice. I don't think it's very intuitive. Personally, I approach it like this. I've got my second order quadratic fit. But in order to operate this, if I'm using it in a full iterative method, um, I need to keep finding my gradients. Well, how am I going to find my gradients? Well, I'm going to have effectively an approximate linearization for gradient. That's my second equation. So if I want to find a gradient at point r plus 1. Well, I take the gradient at r, and then I increase it a bit based on the curvature at um, r and the distance away. This is the equivalent of the ordinary linearization equation, but I've done it for gradients. So effectively, that's m r plus 1. That's m r. And of course, the, that this second differential is dm by dr, m being gradient, yeah, at r times h, whatever the distance is, yeah? So it's the same sort of thing with gradients. OK, now let's use it. I'm going to use <clears throat> my method. So here's my differential equation that I want to solve. Here's my initial conditions. I'm going to use h equals 0 0.2. OK, so here's, and here's my iterative formula down here. Um, what's the first thing I'm going to do? Well, I need... I know at this point, I know what my initial y value is. I know what my gradient at y is, at that initial point is. What I don't know is what my um, second differential is. How am I going to find it? Well, I've got a differential equation. So here's my differential equation. And I'm going to apply that at the first point by substituting in the values from my initial condition. So x equals 1, um, y equals uh, 4 and dy by dx, the gradient equals 3. And using the formula, I get that my second differential is 20. OK, what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to take that and I'm going to substitute it into my diff equation. So my, um, my quadratic fit, apologies, quadratic fit. So I need my y0. Well, I know that my y0 is 4. My gradient at the start point was 3, and I've just worked out that my second differential is 20. I put that in, and I get a new y value. So I know my first point, my iterative point. So 
1.2, uh, is x and y is 5. Now, if you were doing this in an Edexcel exam, that's where you'd stop. But you can, of course, carry on iterating this process. So let's see how we can do that to find that, because that was P1 in effect. Um, let's find P2, shall we? Okay, <clears throat> now the first thing we need to know is we don't at this point know um, we need a gradient. We're going from P1 now to P2. So I need to find the gradient at P1, and I use my other formula for that. So the gradient at P1 is going to be gradient at P0 times plus the, um, an adjustment for the curvature at P0. So gradient P1 was 3, curvature, sorry, P0 was 3, curvature at P0 um, was 20, uh, multiply it through. So the gradient at P uh, P1 is 7. So if you think about it, we started at P0 and our gradient was 3. Now we're at P now we're at P1 uh, P1 and the gradient's gone up to 7 because of the curvature. Yeah. Okay. So now I know that's 7. I can substitute that into my diff equation. So I'm at P1, x equals uh, 1.2, y equals 5, and my new approximate gradient is 7. So I know my Curvature now, my second differential is 33.44, and I'm going to substitute that in to my quadratic fit to find y2. So here we go, y2. Um, Y1's 5, the gradient at y1 was 7, the curvature at y1 was 33, and using the formula, I get that y2 is. 7.0688. So there we go. I've got P2 now. Here's my P2, isn't it? And I could repeat this process. I am going to show it just so you can see what we have to do. So I'm now going to try and find P3. So I need to know what the gradient is at P2. Well, I use my gradient approximation formula here. My gradient at P1 was 7. My curvature at P1 was 33. So my approximate gradient at um, P2 is going to be 13. Again, my gradient's increased. It's gone from 7. It went from 7. It's now up to 13 at this point, isn't it? So everything's just increasing. OK, let's see what happens next. I take that value, substitute it into my differential equation. X is 1.4. Y is, this is a 2, 7.068, and my gradient at 2 is, point 0.2 is 13, so I get 65 for my curvature. So I'm starting to really curve. This curve's really turning now, isn't it? Really um, bendy. Um, so then I go back to my quadratic fit. Here it is. This is my quadratic fit. Put those values in uh, from y2. So the y2 was um, 7.06, the gradient at 2 is 13, and the second differential is 65. I get a new y value out. So there's my P3, x equals 1.6, y equals 11.119. Don't need to be this accurate, really. I can repeat the same process again, find the gradient at P3. There we go, 26, it's risen even more. Substitute that into my differential equation to find my second differential, which is now up to 150. Wow, that's really curved, isn't it? And then I take those values, substitute them into my quadratic fit, and for all my using my y3 values, and I get a y um, a 0.3 values, p3 values, and I get my p4y. There it is. 19.54 um, um, and I could just carry on doing this forever so let's have a look at the results of what I've just done <clears throat> and I've done this one more point I added an extra point I got up to two and my y value was nearly 40 so if I took those points and I plotted them well I started off at one I went to uh, sorry I started off at four went to five went to seven or went to eleven got 11, got, and that's 19, and then I got 39. There we go. So those are my points. And that was on the basis of using a step of h equals um, 0 0.2.
Now, what I've also done here on this graph is added some, I've increased the, um, sort of reduced the H value, so I have more steps to get more accuracy. And you can see that actually I'm getting quite a lot of difference as I move up. So if I went up to um, this value here, H equals um, 0 0.02, I would get this yellow line here and surprise, wow, my H so my y value at 2 is now up to nearly 100 isn't it rather than the 40 that we predicted initially and if i went out and really went for it but um we're going to show that that's probably with just about 10 percent error on it and if i looked at my final one here here i've put h equals 0 0.0001 so i've got what's that got um i've got a thousand or is that ten thousand iterations here I get right up to this value, I get this curve here, the grey sort of curve, this grey curve. That's probably the most accurate curve we could get. Um, it's converging to this point here, stopping around there. So that seems to be right as I increased the number of iterations. Um, that would probably give me my most accurate curve. But you can see if I increase, used a spreadsheet like I did and used this method, I can actually get a very accurate um, prediction of the y values all the way through. So there we have it. Um, Euler's method for second order differential equations of this sort. What are we going to do? We're going to use our differential equation to find our second um, second differential. We're going to use a quadratic fit of that sort to find go from point to point. Um, finding the y values. We're also going to need an equation that predicts or approximates the gradients as we go along because we're going to need to keep feeding that in place or into the differential equation there um, and, you know, and into, here, um, into there as well. So we have to use that as well and then we can just repeat this iteratively and of course if we reduce h we're going to get more accurate results again. Hope that's of use.